This episode of Lawyers Tell All is brought to you by Law Firm Conversions. If your law firm's phone is ringing, that only means your marketing is successful. It's what happens when the phone is answered that will drive your success or failure. Visit www.intakeacademy.com and claim your free copy of this groundbreaking book, along with resources on mental health for intake specialists and empathy. Plus, become eligible to receive a free 15-minute consult with Chris Mullins. Welcome to the Lawyers Tell All podcast, where Chris Mullins, the preeminent sales and communications consultant in the legal industry, shows you how it looks through lawyers' eyes. Here, innovators in the trenches provide powerful insights that help you connect with new clients, handle the sometimes harsh realities of the legal profession, and embrace the mindsets needed to succeed. Be sure to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, tune in, and let's take a deep dive. It's Chris Mullins with the Antique Academy and Lawyers Tell All. And today I'm going to interview my good friend, Ken Hardison of Pelma. And I'm going to let Ken tell you about himself. Go ahead, Ken. Okay. Uh, Well, I'm a retired practicing lawyer. Uh, I'm the founder and president of Pelma Personal Injury Lawyers Marketing and Management Association. And, uh, you know, I... uh, kind of run that and uh, put on events and do coaching and and uh, try to help lawyers, especially contingency-based lawyers, grow their practices, really, and have better profits and a more balanced life, if, if possible. So did, did you always have a balanced life? Oh, hell no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I kill myself. That's why I got all these wrinkles up here, is uh, wow. probably the first 15 years I practiced law, I worked 60, 80-hour weeks. And, uh, you know, and I didn't know what I didn't know, but uh, it's very easy. Uh, Like I say, it's very easy, but it's 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 doable. It's easy enough that you don't have to do that. You got to work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. A lot of things involved in that, you know. Uh, Delegation, leveraging strengths, you know. uh, Putting really good people, smarter people than you are around you, uh, you mm-hmm. know, time management. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I could talk about that for three or four days because I, I made right. every, I made every mistake a man could make on that first probably 15, 20 years of practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you know I own five companies and uh, I probably work tops forty hours a week, thirty to forty. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, but you know. And, uh, you know, but I got really good people and, yeah, you know, a lot of processes, procedures, mm-hmm. you know, uh, do things to make it to where, you know, use a lot of checklists, prioritizing, you know, setting aside time, getting rid of the time vampires and things like that. Mm-hmm. So a lot, what- about, a, lot, a lot to it. But right, yeah. a, lot, a lot to it, and you got to be able to um, be willing to kind of push through it. But what happened? So, because you had you were practicing law, so what happened that made you say, "Okay, I'm going to shift, no more practicing law"? Like, what was it that made that whole thing start to move? Yeah, well, my deal is I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. Even when I was in college and law school, I had businesses, and I like to build stuff, but I get bored uh, after I get it built up. And uh, I don't know. I just woke up one morning. I had built it up from like two lawyers and three staff to thirteen lawyers, forty-seven staff. We would do, we were doing it from a half a million to like eight million in like five or six years. And uh, I don't know. I just woke up one morning. I said, I, I don't. I don't look forward to doing this. And the, my deal is, I preach this to all my children and anybody. If you don't have a passion for what you're doing, get the hell out of it because the money is not worth it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I did. I said I sold out, and I was going to go down, and I thought oh, I'll just retire. I went down six months to Myrtle Beach and went pure crazy. You know, I couldn't stand it. And people mm-hmm. were calling me. Lawyers would call me and say, 
how'd you do this? How'd you grow so fast? Do this. And uh, my wife said, well, you need to start charging people for this because, you know, you're giving out gold. And, and I said, well, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. And I was studying under Dan Kennedy, and I, I I went to him for advice. He said, "Start start an association and help lawyers so that they don't make the same mistakes you made." I said, "He said you make some money out of it." He said, "But the deal is, you like helping people, so that that'll be a good see how you like it. If you don't like it, close it down." And I I loved it. Mm-hmm. That's how it got started. It was really almost like a hobby to start with, and then it kind kind of big, you know. It, when I started mm-hmm. it. 2009 it was really just more of a something to do to keep me busy but turned into a real business about 2013 mm-hmm. and then it just really took off in like 2019 right before COVID actually mm-hmm. okay so like during the whole um Pilma journey were you up and down with your success like you know okay things are great then then you're like trying to figure it out or deciding if you're going to continue it or not continue it did you have challenges? Had, bu- there? had, had some bumps in the road, of course, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I was in a couple of masterminds with other business people, and uh, they gave me a lot of help. To be honest with you, and uh, tried different things, and uh, you know, went against some of the things I was taught. Kind of, kind of counterintuitive, but it worked. Because you know, you can't. What is it? You keep doing the same deal. Yeah. We're never expecting different results is insanity. So we, we mixed it up and then we kind of got the right formula and uh, got the right people. You know, we had to go through a lot of that too. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, when we went virtual before COVID, we went virtual in 2018. It opened up the market for me to get really good people. I was in Myrtle Beach and Myrtle Beach is a great place. But a lot of people will come down here to retire party yeah. or escape something and so the the quality of of people for his help uh was not that great just to be honest they're good people but they just don't nobody want to work down here um, yeah. they want to party and that's okay and play golf and swim and fish and mm-hmm. so that that helped me so like now Pilma is like my graphic artist lives in uh montana you know uh my marketing director lives in Michigan, you know. Uh, my CEO lives in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I'm a graphic artist from Pakistan, you know. Uh, you know, uh, so I got two graphic artists now and uh, just hired a video editor from Pakistan, uh, which has changed everything going offshore, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah. it, a lot of our lawyers in Pilma are going offshore for certain jobs, not all. Mm-hmm. But that seems to it's it, it's just hard to find people. If you do find somebody that's really good, they won't. You know, a paralegal won't seventy five to hundred thousand dollars, and uh, you know we can get paralegals. We can get lawyers in Mexico for twenty eight thousand dollars a year that can do paralegal work. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's, it's it, the world has changed. COVID COVID made us speed up the process of what was eventually going to happen anyway, but it just kicked the, kicked our butts and made us have to do it. Because lawyers are always slow for change. As an industry in whole, they're always behind. You know, with the internet, they were behind. Uh, you know, with technology, they're behind. And they're going to be behind in this artificial intelligence. Uh, most of them, the smart ones will not. Uh, you know, and uh, you got to grab hold of this stuff and embrace it. Uh, because you got to adapt, uh, mm-hmm. keep growing. You got to adapt your business. I mean, you get you can't just stay the same. You got you know, think the world is wide open now, changing. You know. Mm-hmm. So. so what what is it that made you decide to be an attorney? Do you remember? Yeah, actually, I do. I because I went through a whole process. First, I was going to be a CPA. Then I was going to be a trust officer at a bank, and. Uh, I was uh, dating this girl, and I, I worked full time while I was going to school as a butcher. And she was babysitting for this lawyer one night, and I knew the guy, very, very popular lawyer in town, very good. And so I, I was there, got there with her. I went with her, you know, just I got off of work, and uh, 
watching him why he did. And I talked to him when he got back. He looked, I think he was drinking a little bit. So I asked him all about it. And I said, you know, I like what you do. He said, I said, you help a lot of people. I said, you make good money. I said, you got your own business. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's kind of what I want to do. I want to own my own business. I, I, and I worked for a lot of other people until I got out of law school, but I never liked it. I always like to be my own boss. Mm-hmm. And I like the independence of that, but I also like that I'm the only one holding myself back if I want to work right. 80 hours a week and make the money. And I was all about money back then. I'm not, I changed that when I sold the law firm because if I'd been about money, I could have made a lot more money. Mm-hmm. But money doesn't make you happy. It, it gives you, it buys you freedom to be able to do what you want to do. But when I sold out, I had that money. So, I did, you know, I could, I could have done nothing and just, you know, lived off the, the interest, you know. But that was boring. And, uh, you know, so I do this, you know, I do this. And I got several other businesses that I enjoy. But Pilma's, Pilma's my, that's my love and joy. That's that's what <laughs> that's what makes me get up in the morning, I'll be honest to you. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I look forward to my wife says, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I've talked today, I've talked to four or five different lawyers and uh, and, and help them out of some of their problems, issues they're having, you know, yeah. or, I get, or I send them to people like you, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I can't help them, but I know who can help them, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or I can see stuff they can't see because right. even, if, even if you're smart as hell, sometimes when you're in the forest, you can't see the trees, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's easier to see it from the outside than it is from inside. I've had to get help before, like with Pilma, you know, and I sit there and say, that was so simple. Why didn't mm-hmm. I? He said, well, you're in the middle of it. You know, when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see things in the different outside. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I I really love doing it. I mean, I love the masterminds. Uh, you know, I run six masterminds now. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been doing masterminding since 98, not not running them, but being in one. And I've mm-hmm. always been at least one, if not two, myself, and I pay other people to be in them. Got nothing to do with law, but uh, I know masterminds can really, you know, really help you jumpstart your business because you're running from others instead of having to admit the will, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially, if it's, especially, I mean, I've made one now that's not that big, but it's all people that do what I do, but they do it for different. They, they're coaches and they run organizations like ones for music uh, teacher owners, you know, that do music academies. Another yeah. one, mm-hmm. guy does dentists. Another one, a guy does artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one, a guy does uh, uh, chiropractors. Mm-hmm. So together two times a year and just share what's working, not working, and what issues we're having. Same thing you do in the legal ones. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm not competing with them so that everybody's willing to share. If right. my, people are competing, that's why I make it market exclusive. Like nobody from the same TV market or same town are going to be in the same one because if they do, they're going to hold back. And they have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So... Nobody from their own market. They're not scared to ask questions because they don't. They're not going to look dumb in front of their competitors. Mm-hmm. Um, they bring stuff that's working and share it because they like to show that they know what they're doing mm-hmm. and they help other people. And then they get they get help with challenges from that they're having, you know, and stuff that they're thinking about trying. And then somebody can say, "Yeah, I tried that three years ago. It just didn't work." And this is why. Bam, bam, bam. Or they could say, I'm thinking about doing this guy. I say, yeah, that's great. He said, he said I did it, and I knocked my home run. You ought to do it. Mm-hmm. Whatever it might be. It might be some marketing tactic. It might be some administrative way to do, pay your lawyers. It could be anything. So, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy that. I really do. And I know I bring great people like you in. I mean, you teach you all the intakes because we know that's where the most leakage is in law firms. Uh, every law firm I've ever been to or coached or did a consult, nobody ever had it down. Uh, not even my law firm. Uh, it's 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 like I tell people it's like play anybody that ever play golf knows you never master it. You feel like you got it down. You shoot like a low score of, of your century, and then you go out the next day and just shot 10, 15 strokes worse because you can never master it. That's I look at intake like that yeah. because somebody's gonna have a bad day one day, or something's gonna happen, or you're gonna lose some people. 
Mm-hmm. Or somebody's going to drop the ball because they get complacent. Because like, well, they've been doing good the last month. I don't need to watch them as hard, you know. Well, I don't need to. Right, yeah. train. I don't need to keep training because they got it down. Mm-hmm. But the deal is, <laughs> yeah, spend all this money. You know, I know lawyers. I've got lawyers in my masterminds that spends eight, ten million dollars a year on marketing. And if they spend that kind of money, you want to make sure you sign up every case that you want. Mm-hmm. And and and. That's your ROI. I mean, if I'm signing up eighty percent of what I want, and uh, I can put that up to ninety percent of what I want or ninety three percent, that's worth millions to that guy. Mm-hmm. Now, spending a hundred thousand, it it might be worth hundreds of thousands, but sure. it's worth something either way, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I think uh, what you do for our members and other lawyers out there is very very important. I think you do a good job. I just saw something on listserv today. We got a big listserv. And uh guy Moses from uh, Illinois, yeah. mm-hmm. Illinois was saying you really helped his men to take the part. But it. he said uh, he'd be glad to share with the group, you know, our members, which is another good deal about Pimmel. You know, we got a listserv so people can talk about mm-hmm. softwares, uh, marketing companies, consultants like you. You know, and and you know, give their take on it. Uh, so it's a good thing, I think. You know, but uh, like you, I got Mickey Love running the business. Mm-hmm. I got, uh, uh, well, Cassie Andrews working on the marketing. I do. Mm-hmm. We got a great magazine. I, I love it. Uh, uh, you got you got David. Uh, what, what's what's David's name? Um, he. He oh uh, he's got the marketing law marketing company. Um, we were on the mat. We're at your your uh, mastermind on Zoom together. Is that his name? Was David? Uh, I'm trying to think. Who you talking Higgins? about? Uh, I'm not sure. I wish I could remember his name. Oh, because... you talking about Bill Biggs? No, 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 no. Uh, the other another fellow. Um, it'll it'll come to me. But I just wanted to uh, say a couple things. Well, first thing about the mastermind is like. I can tell everybody, I say, I say it all the time, mastermind is like the most important thing that you can do. Uh, I remember a long time ago, it was only $6,000 and now it's $40,000 for yeah. it. It's a small mastermind group. But when I first went, it was 6000 and that was a long time ago. And I was like, oh my God, I can't pay that money. And put it on a credit card and I just never looked back. And it was like with the master, like Dan Kennedy. Right. And I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And, you know, I, as well as other attorneys had to like figure out, okay, do I really want to spend the money? You know, now it's like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that for a mastermind, but you get it back so fast as long as you participate. So like participating in your life, you need to participate in a mastermind. If you do yeah. that, it's a win-win all the way around. Yep, yeah, you gotta you gotta invest, but I mean, you gotta invest your time. And in, in the you know, and the other deal is, I tell people, you know, uh, you gotta go back home and, and implement. You know, just uh-huh. take because they'll walk away with ten or twenty ideas. I said, just pick two or three, and and yeah. and, them, and try to get one or two of those done before the next meeting, and you will do good. If you do that every three or four months, you're gonna be doing good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and don't be afraid to use the listservs and and reach out to the other members. Like some, I think some some attorneys feel like, well, I'm not quite where they are yet. I don't think I want to reach out and talk to them. How are they going to talk to me? Well, you just got to act as if and just push on and do it. And they won't be thinking anything of you. They're they're very positive and everybody yeah. wants to help everybody. So you got to do a mastermind. It's, yeah, you know, it's like it's like I always tell people there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's stupid people that don't ask questions. Yeah. Because if you're paying for something, then ask the damn question. When I was in law school, I'd ask the question and it might sound dumb, but when I walk out, I had three or four people come up to me every class. Right. And, Glad you asked that kid. I wanted to, but I was I was embarrassed. I thought everybody think I was stupid. I said, I don't care what people think about me. I said, uh, you know, I want to learn this shit. I want to pass the bar. I got, you know, I want to go places. I want to do things. So to be, you know, I'm paying them money. I want to get the, I want to get the information. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why not? I mean, I don't care what. I mean, you know, so be it. I mean, there's probably, if you thought of it, you're not the first person to think of that question. 
Right. That's, what, that's what I try to do on podcasts too. When I'm doing podcasts, I try to ask people questions that I think I would have asked when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But was afraid to ask because people would think I would, you know. But I'd ask them anyway. But you know, yeah. that's that's the key. I think uh, well, that's a good key. You know, that uh, asking the right questions. A good, they call that a good leadership quality. Yeah, hundred percent. Doing the right question to ask. Let me, I just want to ask you a couple of things here. So, um, because I want to make sure the attorneys that are watching get get help. And um, so what lessons did you learn um, when you were younger, when you were with your, your, your parents and those lessons you carried over to who you are today? Yeah, I, I think the biggest one, was treat people the way you want to be treated and and do business. I mean, and, 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 and my dad did a lot of deals on handshakes and I know I'm a lawyer and I know you're, you're supposed to protect people, but I still do a lot of deals on handshakes, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and listen, I get taken advantage of sometimes, but my theory is if they can live with it, I can live without it. Uh, I've done good. I've been blessed. Uh, you know, if they need it that bad, let them have it. Uh, now, I can't say my, my wife feels that way. <laughs> but, but but I told her, I said, don't worry, we'll make more. We'll, we'll, we'll do okay. We're doing all right. I said, uh, that was what I figured out in my law practice, too. The better I, treat my cli- I, I treated my clients and put them as number one, the more money I made. Because mm-hmm. I can have a lot more referrals, right? Mm-hmm. People knew I really cared that I was authentic. And, and, and I won't, they won't get, you know. Now, like I said before, when I started out, it was all about the money. But I think I really started making money when I did, when that was not number one. When it right, was right. when it when it was looking after the client was actually number one. And you know, the, and I just kept telling people, if you do the right thing, treat people the way you want to be treated, the money will come. You know, it might not come as fast as you want it, but it will come, mm-hmm. and you feel a lot better about yourself, and people feel better about you. You know. Uh, but yeah, I think those two things, treat people the way you want to be treated and, you know, uh, be honest enough to be able to do a deal with a handshake, no matter if it's a million dollar deal or, or 10 mm-hmm. I know that's crazy, me being a lawyer. And I do get, I mean, I want to get a memo or, 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 or something. I mean, you know. But, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to do something. But I mean, little deals in particular, I got all kinds of little side deals that I just, couldn't you keep up with them? Now I, I sent them to my COO. I said, keep up with this because I'll forget it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I get checks in the mail. I don't even know what they're for. Yeah. <laughs> Something that I did for somebody three years ago. And they said, I'll pay you when this comes through. And I forgot about it. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So what, so what about, um, what would you say to attorneys out there that they're like listening to you and they're like, yep, that's Ken Hardison. I'm not Ken Hardison. It's not going to happen for me. Like, what? Why do you think um, attorneys have such a hard time with becoming entrepreneurs or following through or being persistent or being risk takers and and not just kind of falling back to old bad habits? What, what is it? It's a fear of the unknown. That's the biggest thing that holds people back is the fear of the unknown. Um, but going back, you know, and here's the deal about Ken Horst. Ken Horst is nothing but old country guy from, from a little hick town in North Carolina mm-hmm. whose mother had an eighth grade education, father had a fourth grade education. I was on my own. I, they moved when I was a, when my junior and senior year in high school, and I stayed at home. And they moved about 100 miles away, and I stayed because I had a job as a butcher. And I was going to school and I was team captain of the football team and I had a girlfriend. I did not want to move. So I, my dad said, you're, you, 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 but don't, but you're on your own. You got to, I'm not paying for anything, you know, and I had to work my way through the last year of high school, mm. four years of undergraduate, three years of law school. And I didn't take out a lot of loans. Uh, I was very blessed to get some scholarships, but it, not full and borrowed a little bit of money from the student loan thing. But I, I, I work, anything I've got, and what I've done, I've done it myself. Yeah. And I'm proud of that. I mean, you know, not bragging, but maybe I am bragging. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it because nobody gave me anything, you know, and uh, had a lot of people help me out through the years. But I mean, I never had like 
I didn't inherit three hundred million dollars from my father, mm-hmm. <laughs> real estate empire, or anything like that, or even a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I started with with scratch. At the, had some good breaks. Uh, yeah, know. but the good breaks don't you just have to be persistent enough to be at the right place, and then the break. Yeah. And yeah, and I've had a lot of, I call them learning experiences. I think that's the other thing my attitude is. I never, I look at things always on the, the glass is always half full with me. I always, you know, and, and I think the other deal is sometimes people just can't, and I used to have this problem. I couldn't think big enough. I said, well, I'm just old country guy. There's no way I can yeah. build this or do that or do whatever or build this kind of law firm. And just with some good, the masterminds and different things and coaching. And I said, you know what? They said, you can. I mean, early on, many years ago, I, I was with Jay Abraham, who they don't know him, need to look him up. He's probably the smartest marketer in the world. Mm-hmm. Him and Dan Kennedy, I think, are the two best. Mm-hmm. are living right now. There are probably some other ones that are dead now, but he said, your biggest problem is yourself. I said, what? He says, you don't, you don't believe in yourself enough. And I said, what do you mean? He says, he said, I've watched you in this match. He said, you're a genius. I said, well, uh, blow it smoke. He said, no. He said, you really think outside the box? He said, you're holding yourself back. Mm-hmm. He said, if you got an idea, go for it. And he said, what's the worst thing that happened? I said, it don't work. He said, now you know what don't work. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work or what doesn't work. He said, and then you go to the next thing. So yeah, I've tried, when I was practicing law, I, I would try and, you know, 50% of the stuff I tried didn't work. 50% of it did. And then the one well, stuff that did, I put money behind it. It's just like doing social media. I mean, that's the way we do social media. We put out six ads. And whichever one takes hold, then we put money right. behind it yeah. and make it an ad. I mean, that's that's the same deal. It's all testing. Nobody really knows. You right. know, yeah. nobody, nobody really knows what's going to work. Mm-hmm. Not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they might have a good idea of what's going to work, but they don't know. Yeah. You got to try it. So, um, like, can you think of, off the top of your head, some, some stories about um, attorneys that you've helped go from small mind thinking and not doing mm-hmm. it that great, and then they they took your advice, they actually applied it, and and they got to the other side. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I got three case studies that I did in a book called The Mastermind Effect. That's uh, it's on Amazon, but but what I was Matt Dubin, and uh, this was funny. In 2013, he was at one of my events, and we were trying to get him to join the mastermind. And he was him, two assistants, and he had about he was doing about I don't know two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. He says mastermind's not for me, Ken. He says I'm small potatoes. Mm. I said how do you, how do you, where the hell do you think I started at? I started with <laughs> three people i said you got everybody start somewhere mm. i said come try it out if you don't like it i'll give you money back whatever i said in and, and today he is uh and he was sad he had maybe a total of 80 60 cases now he's probably got over a thousand cases he signed up over 100 cases a month wow he's probably the, He's probably the number two PI lawyer in Seattle, Washington area. Maybe three, but the deal is he's all done this in 10 years. I'm starting really with nothing. Yeah. And and listen, he could teach this stuff. He's in our mastermind now. He's still in the mastermind. And he, he started out in the lower group, then went to the middle group. Now he's at the over $10 million group. Uh, so, yeah, he was... Uh, and, you know, and he's smart. He was smart back then. He just didn't wow. feel like he felt like it was too, you know. I didn't, you know. So yeah, but now he's, you know, he just run an office now. He don't even hardly practice law anymore, and he's doing stuff with his. He's got a boy that's about thirteen. He spent a lot of time with him and mm-hmm. some stuff he wants to do, and and uh, so that's one of them. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that, that's probably my the guy that's probably did not the bit. One of the best, you know. And then I had a girl that was doing really good. She, she was doing a couple of me in a year, but she was killing herself like I was back then. Mm. And uh, now she's doing probably 20 times what she was doing 12 years wow, ago. that's great. She's probably yeah. doing, you know, uh, 
30, 40 million in the, and the, she works about 25, 30 hours a week. Wonderful. Yeah. She's got, she got some really good people. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so yeah, there's a bunch of them out there. I mean, there's a bunch that, uh, and I get a lot of lawyers that are doing three to five or two to, you know, we had one in Pennsylvania that, uh, Ken Cate, he was doing like one and one and a half. And he said, I want to do, I want to get, you know, I want to get, and like he doubled the first year. He doubled the second year. I mean, you know, it killed it, but he took everything that we taught him and he, and he, he, he drank it like a fire hose and he yeah. put it out. He put it out there, him and his partner, Tom, uh, really get implemented and they, they've turned it around. I mean, you know, now they're big time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it can be done. And then there's some that it don't, don't take on because they don't go back and implement or they're scared or they've got what I call the fear factor. Exactly. You know, uh, but, but, uh, you know, as long as you know, as long as you know what your risk, I mean, what your top, ability to what is what is the most you can lose if this fails mm -hmm. and you're okay with that it's like when i go to vegas I take two thousand dollars when i lose that it's over with i know no matter what happens that's my exposure so i can live with that i don't like it mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can live with that so if you know what your exposure is and you can live with that then you need to try new things and go forward and not be scared you know, and I think law school also teaches you really to think about everything that can go wrong. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they really do. I mean, they, they, they almost take you down like going in the military, like boot camp, and they strip you down and rebuild your mind to think analytical and look at the worst possible sit Because that's what you're supposed to do when you look after your clients. But I think that sometimes makes them look at the worst terrible, you know. Like if I got something... That, I just never accepted no for it. I mean, well, you can't do this. Well, why can't I do this? Because this, well, wait a minute. Maybe I can do this. Well, no, you know, well, listen, let's try this. Well, I don't think it'll work. Well, we can try it. Well, yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, that's the deal. I mean, you've got to not be scared to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, that's one good thing about PI lawyers. They are sometimes, most of them, willing to take chances. I call them gunslingers. And they got pretty good egos, or don't they couldn't be really good trial lawyers. And so they're willing to take some chances, or they wouldn't even be doing PI law because that's contingency. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You don't win, mm -hmm. you don't get paid unless you win. So, you know, but even I had that, but I still won't quite there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know a lot of PI lawyers that are still just doing a million a year and maybe putting 300 in their pocket. Yeah. Good money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I know so many more that are doing so much better. And, and the other thing is, a lot of them that are doing so much better, they're not working near as much. They, they've hired a COO or CEO. Yeah. They might pay that person three or $400,000, and then they're off skiing or going on these three-month mm -hmm. sabbaticals to, you know, we've got one lawyer that takes the whole summer off and takes his family. Like one year he went to France and Europe. Yeah. Other he went over to Tibet over there somewhere in, in Oriental. It must uh, make you feel really good. It must make you feel really good just to see all of your your disciples or <laughs> they're growing and they're well, well it does, but it make you know the deal is I tell them you you, you I helped you, but you you did it. Mm, right. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. didn't do it for you. You did it. I just give you the the guides, the guidelines, you know, and and, the, and what not to do, you know, because between me and all the people I've consulted with and helped over the years. You know, and it's like people coming to lawyers, they usually come to you after they already screwed it up and they want you to fix it. A lot of times that's what they come to me. They already got screwed up and I got to fix it. So I've seen everything. I've seen where all the mistakes are made. So I can help people avoid that. Yeah. And that's good because it saves a lot of money and it and that makes that fear go away that, well, Ken says this guy did it over in New Orleans. Right. And I can talk to him, but, you know, the deal is if that guy can do it, then I can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I was saying earlier. I mean, if I can do this, if I did this with what I, you know, anybody, I mean, I started, like I said, pretty much nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but, and it takes grit. And uh, we had a speaker come talk on grit 
Uh, yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, I think that's, I want the smartest guy in the class, but I probably had the most grit. I, I just would not give up. And I think that's what set me apart, to be honest with you. It won't that I was smarter than other people or even work harder. Just I just w- refused to give up by this grit. Just mm-hmm. refused to take no or failure as a, as a mm-hmm. result. And I still won't because if, it, if I fail in it, I just call it a learning Right. Yeah. Just a learning experience and go on. Yeah. I never would say it's a failure. It's now I know what don't, doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So, so here you are. You're speaking to all these attorneys right now. What, what, what are the last few things that you want to say to encourage them to to push mm-hmm. on and get to the next step? What would it be? Well, just uh, growing a business is like anything else. It take, it's like eating elephants. It's one bite at a time. You can't do it overnight. You can't try to do everything at one time. Uh, go after your loaf hanging fruit. Um, the things that don't cost you a lot of money. And and here's the biggest deal I see, you know, it, it, I'm a certified scaling up coach with Vern Harnish. And, and so they, their big principle is if you haven't read the book, you ought to read it scaling up or Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. You've got to have people, good people, but you can't do it by yourself. No business was really built on the back of C players. Okay, you got to have some A players and some and lot Bs and, and, and many A's as you can get. And then you got to have strategy. Mm-hmm. Now you got to have set. You can't just go out there and start throwing money on the wall. You know, what, what kind, what's my ideal client? How am I going to get them? What do they watch? What do they hear? You know, do I just want these types of cases or these types of cases? How do I go get those cases? You got to have a strategy, a marketing strategy mm-hmm. or a growth strategy, a vision. And then the next thing is execution. And this is where, see, this is where most people fail at because, uh, number one, they're somebody like me that's got a million, not million ideas, but they get started and they never get yeah. finished on anyone. And I used to be the world's worst on that, but I've got a lot more blinders on now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we don't only work, we only work on two or three projects at a time. We never work on as far as big deals at Pilma, and that's what I try to get my law firms. Because you'd have 20 or 30 great ideas, but I don't have one that I can execute. Right, yeah. Done in a quarter. And have 10 or 20 that I never get done. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, you know, and you can't get started and stop, and you got to have deadlines and and uh, accountability and alignment and all that kind of stuff that I can talk about for another four or five hours. But, but the deal is, Focus and discipline, because that will get you execution. If you focus on what you want to get done this quarter, and have the discipline not to be sh- distracted by the shiny objects. Or mm-hmm, right, the shiny you. objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, that's the deal. And then the last thing, of course, is you got to have cash flow, because, uh, you know, we say, oh, we want to, but, you know, when the money runs out, it's over. You know, so you've got to watch your money, uh, mm-hmm. which doesn't mean you got to be frugal. It just means you've got to have the ability to withstand some bad months, which will happen in the PI business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you don't, then you're in trouble. But, you know, I really think the key is focus and discipline and execution and not being scared or afraid of the unknown, you know, just know what your, you know, what your risk is, right. what's your most that you're going to lose out of this deal and, uh, and go with it. But no, that's, that's my deal. You know, uh, and put the client first. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Jay Abraham calls it, what does he call it? The, uh, I forget now, but it's, uh, it's in one of my, it was in my uh, core values at my law firm. Everything we do is for the benefit of our client. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, every, not for the benefit of us, not for the benefit of the defense, not for mm-hmm. the, you know, for the benefit of the client. If it didn't benefit, so that way it made it real easy to make decisions. Right, right. Your value, yeah. If your core value is everything you do is for the benefit, and that's kind of what I try to do with Puma. Everything's for the benefit of the members. Mm. If, uh, even if it's not for the benefit of Ken Hardis, because in the long run, it will benefit me. It, right, exactly. Not the short, not the short run. Not right, the short right. run. That, I, mean, I could do stuff that would cost me money mm-hmm. you know, that I lose on, but if I... Uh, like I said, I think, if, you know, I know this sounds corny, but I, I'm 67. I got, you know, 
I've lived this my whole life and I've got a pretty good reputation out there that if I tell you something, you can, you can bank on it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I hope it, I hope that's my reputation. It is. It is your reputation. That's what I've tried. That's what I've tried to build. Not that I was the smartest or the best, but that whatever I told you, you, you know, you could count on it. If I promise you something, I'm going to do it unless it's beyond my control. Yeah, but you're also um, you're also honest about your successes or, or your lessons learned. Um, you reveal yourself so that everybody can learn from you and then trust you. And then therefore they can really learn from you. Yeah. And um, you, you just, you just tell the truth, no matter how it comes out, you do. And, yeah. and I think people get that from you. So that's probably why they want to follow you and, uh, you know, learn from you. And right now is a good time to say, how can people get in touch with the mastermind? How can we get people to join the mastermind? Yeah, it's uh well, it's an application. And believe it or not, I do turn some people down. I tell them they're not ready for it. You need to go do this, this, this. Then when you do this, you can come back. And, they, and they, I think it really blows their mind because they can, yeah. you're turning down money. Kim, why are you doing that? I said, because it's not in your best interest. And I said, you know, uh, but very few, very few. But I have over the years turned out some or say you're not ready yet. Let's let's let me go read this book, go do this, go do this, go do this, go hire this person, then come back. Info info at Pilma P I L M M A dot O R G. This info at Pilma org. And then just write a note uh, whatever you're interested in, whether it be joining mm-hmm. or, or what's going on. I mean we got uh, I don't know when this is gonna be aired, but we got a event May sixteenth through eighteenth you're gonna be yes. in. Yes. You're, going to be on, you're going to be on the intake panel mm-hmm. sharing your wisdom. And uh, I'm going to talk about execution, which I think is so important. Oh, good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And we're that's going to great. talk about AI and how to. I know. AI, to, AI, this, it's the new shiny object, but it's it a good is, one. It, it is. Good it one. is. It is. But uh, yeah, so we got a lot of stuff. We got about 20 something speakers and we got a bunch of them are warriors and they're sharing a lot of them are my masterminds that they, they, they yeah that's great yeah they, they left to share like i'm talking about how they hire people how to get lawyers how they onboard you know how to keep them you know because that's the, that's the hard thing right now the two biggest challenges right now in the in the that i see it is is the labor market and the and the saturation of the market, you know, with so many lawyers advertising now, mm. you know, uh, that it's hard, you know, it's hard. I mean, yeah. it's more challenging than I've ever seen it, but the people, there's still a lot of lawyers doing very, very well. I mean, we've got mm-hmm. some uh, doing very well. Yeah, well, so if you can go to uh, New Orleans and uh, you'll get more information on Pilma.org, that would be great. It's also good to go, uh, even if your mission is just to go and interview other uh, mastermind members, because that's a great way to kind of feel it yeah. out. Yeah, and, that's what and, I, yeah. Yeah, I had a guy join today, uh, and he, he's been around the markets, I mean, uh, a long time. And uh, I, I met, I spoke at an event, and he came up and talked to me like what I said. And more, was interested, but he was cautious, and he should have been. And so I give him a list of all the members that ran this this mastermind group. I said, "This is the one you need to go in." Okay. And I gave him all their phone numbers. And uh, beautiful. He, he called a couple of them, and one of them he said, uh, "Your guy Greg Ward down in Florida." He said he told me. I said, "That's good." I said because what I say about myself is good, but what they say is golden. I said because you know, and I'm not a good salesperson. I am and I'm not. I am because I don't try to sell, I think. Right, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, my deal is, you know, ask these other people because you're not going to believe anything I say anyway. Mm-hmm. You right. know, what, am I going to say something bad about it? I mean, if, it, if I thought it was bad, I wouldn't even be doing it. But so yeah. to go ask the members, that's the ones to ask. I give them a list of every member in there. I said, call them, ask them. Yeah. I said, these guys will tell you what the deal is, I hope. Beautiful. All right. Well, Chris Mullins and Ken Hardison with Lawyers Tell All. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Lawyers Tell All. 
where Chris Mullins takes you on a journey with lawyers in the trenches who show you the realities of what it takes to succeed in this chaotic, crowded, ever-changing profession. Remember to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on Lawyers Tell All. Thank you.